I had to change my clothes because I spilled contrast paint all over me earlier. Subscribe for more relatableness. Welcome back to the Lizard of Doom. I am Max. Now I'm continuing on with my night diorama videos. This one is going to be painting the enemies for the knights to be fighting, part of the enemy force. I thought one of the best options for dynamic poses and variants of different models doing different things would be one of the kill team boxes. And this is going to be... Where is it? Watch my balls! These guys. This is one of the only ways to get Death Corpse of Krieg at a, a reasonable price. Now these guys might be going in the diorama but I also want to be able to play with them as a kill team. The point of this diorama is that it's got a playable army inside, which is my 2000 points of chaos knights. It's also gonna have a playable kill team inside. So I'm gonna be pinning these models to their bases so I can unpin them and poke them in the diorama. Hopefully that works. Slight little side note for the diorama plan. It's gonna have a playable army, a playable kill team, and a mini diorama within the diorama. So, Subscribe for that nonsense. And I don't have a lot of time to paint things. A couple of nights a week if I'm lucky, so I've got one day. It was today, it was my only chance. I have one day this week, I've actually booked it off work with annual leave, and I've gotta get these done today. It is the evening now, so let's see how I got on and see if I managed to do my challenge. One day challenge, one kill team, is it possible? Let's have a look. This is actually a lovely little kit. There's loads of different options and loads of different ways to build these guys. I will be saving some parts for my Commissar conversion, which is next week's video, so look forward to that, everyone. Inside comes with two normal sized sprues and a slightly smaller one with like specific upgrades for different kinds of specialists. And this is the only place I know of that you can get the Death Corpse of Krieg transfer sheet without it being extortionately expensive. Also, it came with way too many bases. You only get 10 guys and a med kit in this. Why have I got 20 bases? It took me about an hour and a half, two hours to put all these models together. There are loads of different options. Each individual member comes with at least two options, usually three. I decided to make most of them just with las guns and doing a bonkers bayonet charge because I thought that they would be in this trench that they're going to be in in the diorama and they've suddenly been surprised. So they're all going to turn, start firing and charge these knights. This guy I'm building in the time lapse here is the commander of the group. He has a sword. I chose the sword rather than the chain sword, so he's different from the knights because the knights all have chain swords pretty much. Once I've got them all built, they look badass. You can imagine the diorama now. The next step was to get to pinning them. I want to be able to remove them from their bases. I could magnetize, but this is a hell of a lot cheaper. All you need to do is drill your little holes with a hobby drill and they fit paper clips perfectly. So once I had drilled both feet out and I had both holes ready, it was time to clip the paper clip. Clip the clip, the clip, the clip, clip. You unfold the paper clip and clip just before the bendy bit so you've got a nice straight section. You can then cut that in half and get another one out of it. Then you clip that bendy bit off and go again. And then you've got loads of little pins for the feet of these guys. A little bit of super glue on the holes to make these pins stay in place. Pop them in and let the glue dry. Simple. I've got a lovely little hack with some bright paint to show you how to pin where these pins are gonna to connect to because you wanna make sure they're in the right place. So you dip the pins in some bright paint that's gonna show up on the surface that you need to pin the object to, like this and then you tap it against the surface where you want to drill. Bonk. There you go, two perfect pinpoints. And that will work on anything. If you're pinning arms to big models or guys to their bases, or I don't know, other bits and bobs, this is a really good way of doing this. I'm hoping this is enough to keep it in place. I think it's okay for a game, as long as I pick it up by the base. After this, I blue tack them to a stick. Seems to work. I don't need your expensive spray paint holder majig games workshop. I've got a stick. I like this because it looked like they're all on a little adventure, like they were miniature people in a giant world. Well, I guess they are miniature people in a giant world, but you know what I mean. I gave them a good base coat of trench brown. This is laying down the base color for their uniforms. I waited for that to dry and I got them back upstairs on their stick and popped them on my paint desk ready to go. Back from their adventure, ready for a fresh coat of paint.
The paints for this uniform will be Agrax Earthshade, followed by some Steel Legion Drab, and after that some Bane Blade Brown, followed by some Karak Stone. While I get all of that dry brushing done, let's have a little bit of Lizard Law. Listen up, veterans. Your squad has been chosen. You are the best of the best that the 69th Legion has to offer. We are being sent into hostile territory on a classified mission of high import. Your mission is to find a piece of technology and retrieve it. The nature of this technology is disclosed on a need-to-know basis, and seeing as you don't need to know, I will be overseeing this mission personally. We are heading to an insignificant speck known as Discar. The planet holds no strategic value and is as useless as it is hostile. It was once under the control of the might of the Imperium, but became a sinkhole for resources and was left to crumble into the dirt from once it sprang. That reminds me. Pack your shovels, men, as I have intelligence to suggest that our target has been long buried by the jungle that hides it. Gas masks are essential, as the atmosphere on the world can melt metal in little under a week. So think what it will do to your lungs. The planet may have a warm climate, but you'll be wearing the most protective uniform we can offer, as believe me when I say, even the slightest scratch or bug bite on this toxic planet can turn gangrenous in a minute. One last thing. We have reports of salvaged Imperial war machines being used by the local savages against intruders. I'm sure this is nothing to worry about. So not only has this laid down the colours for the uniform, it also has worked as like a brown slap chop, which is fantastic for murky looking trench dudes. I'm gonna go over this with contrast paints and it will show through lovely. That was weird. Gargax Sewer, Snakebite Leather and Black Legion are my contrasts of choice. I chose my favourite brush and I got to work. Snake bite leather is going on, the belt and the backpack and all the pouches and those kind of straps all over these models. These are Games Workshop models, so of course they're covered in straps and other nonsense. And the Gargax sewer is for the darker leathers, such as the shoes and the gloves on the model. The Black Legion is for anywhere that will be metal and also the black armour panels. I want the armour panels to be black with kind of chipped metal effect later on. There we go, this one's about where I want it with this contrast, so time to do that to the rest of them. After I've done that you can see all the areas are kind of separated now, you can see kind of what I'm intending to do with these models. I think it's going quite well so far. Next I'm going to fill in some of the metallics with dark silver and bronze from Pro Acryl. Then I'm going to colour the gas mask material with the fang, this bluey base colour, and the lenses on the gas mask in white star from Two Thin Coats. I left the recesses black from the contrast paint for the metals. This is a nice way to shade your metals without making them drab by using shades, because that reduces the overall colour, not just shades the recesses. I'm using these bluey greys for the mask because I want there to be some colour on the model but I don't want it to be overbearing, I want this to still be grimdarky. And the Space Wolves grey blues are quite good for this. I then use some Drakenhof Nightshade over the blue to make it a little bit more blue and a little bit less grey. Careful not to let it pull, I don't want to ruin the face especially and obviously careful not to hit the other parts which are now coloured with their base colours using contrast paints. Very careful with the lenses here, just dotting some bright white in there so I can come back with some brighter contrast paints later. To add a little bit more colour to this model in a subtle way. Lovely, that's that step done on everyone and they're progressing deep within the ugly stage at the moment. Give me a second, it'll get there. 
My favorite by far is this little demolition man. He is the best character out of this set with the skull mask and the armor plate on the chest. I gave the sergeant commander guy some little blue stripes on the shoulder just to show he's in charge. This isn't canonical how it works, but it's how my guys work, so deal with it. The next step's gonna be a lot of layering. The first paints for the lighter leather being Ungor Flesh and Ushabti Bone, followed by the darker leather colors of Doomball Brown and Tuskor Fur. After that, I'll be going up through the Space Wolves bluey greys on the mask, and then back to Pro Krill for the metallics silver and rich gold. I'm about to attempt something I've never attempted before. Usually I layer and build up that way or glaze up to the colors or edge highlight, heavy metal style. This time I am going to be doing some scratchy highlights for the leather and the metal work. I've seen this done before. You've got to use quite a nice bright color compared to the dark leather color to make it look like it's really dug into that nice old leather and reveals some new fresher cow skin showing through underneath that hasn't been tainted by the years of grub from these veterans wearing it. You've got to keep quite a good point on your brush while you're doing this and draw purposeful and thin lines around every edge of the object you're trying to do the scratchy highlights on. Now I wouldn't say this is a speed painting technique, it does take a little bit longer than probably just edge highlighting but the effect gives you a lovely worn leather that you can't really do with edge highlighting. It kind of works, but you need the scratches and the texture to really sell it. I had good fun on the big backpack here, making up damage and scratches from previous battles or just wear and tear. It really adds character to the model and makes each model an individual piece. They all have the same colors, but they all look a little bit different. And that is what really does it for me in Warhammer. My own guys have their own story and they don't look like anyone else's models. The bone colour then is only for the very high corners and edges where the wear and tear would be really severe on these pieces and also where the light would catch like the top straps on the backpack. Looking good. I did the same kind of highlighting for the darker leather on the boots and the gloves. This gives them a nice worn look as well, that ties in with the other leathers. I went through some classic layering on the face of this model on the gas mask material, going up through the Space Wolves grey blues, to a point where I was happy with, where I only really did the highest highlights on the top of the cheekbones, underneath the lenses of the gas mask. After those steps, I highlighted the metals with some layering on top of these bright metallic colors that I've showed you earlier, and then I used the brightest metallic color to do all scratches along the edge of the black armor panels like I did on the leather work. After this, it was a case of putting some nice bright yellow contrast on the lenses and a nice bright red contrast on the sword's wiring to make that stand out amongst the drab colors. With this guy looking pretty damn done now, decided it was time to catch the rest of the others up, sort the decals out for his shoulders and experiment with the basing. I performed some surgery on some of the decals because in the kit, there's loads of different legion numbers and there was 269th and I decided to cut the 200th off and have the 69th legion. Way! This was quite easily done. Delicate work with the scalpel. One clean cut all the way down, cuts the twos off and you're left with 69. This is what he looks like with the transfers on. I've put them on the shoulders and I've put a little one on his helmet because he's the leader so he gets a special badge. Good boy special badge man. Also notice I've done the base, it's a very plain muddy base, but I did want these guys to look like they're trench dwellers, you know? No grass, very plain, quite quick and easy to do, which is good because I was running out of time. After this, I set about catching the rest of them up. This is when I had my calamity and spilt snake bite leather contrast all over myself whilst trying to fix a bit I missed earlier on, on one of the backpacks. It did hit one model, but so slightly that I decided to leave it as is. It's this one here. You can see it splashed on the base, one little bit on the shoulder pad, which I'm gonna cover with some metal scuffing, and one little splash on his bedroll on the back of his backpack. I'm gonna keep this, because this makes it look like he's crapped his bedroll. And you know, I'd crap my bedroll too if the next day I was gonna to have to fight some Chaos Knights with nothing but a bayonet. Good luck to your pal. 
I caught the rest of the models up so they were now in this fully painted state with just the bases to do. Let's have a little look at how I quickly do some trench bases. AK Interactive Muddy Ground Texture Paint is so worth it for the money you get this big pot and to be honest, to me, it's better than the Games Workshop Sterling Mud Texture Paint. I found the Sterling Mud Paint to be a bit spongy. You have to spread it out very oddly and it leaves spatula marks in it. Yeah, not a big fan. Love this AK one. While that was drying on all the bases, I put the pins of the model into some corrugated cardboard to hold them still, while I decided to use Grimdark's best friend, Streak and Grime. A very thinned application of this all over the model, to really mucky these boys up and keep them in tone with the knights they'll be facing. I find you only have to use very thin amounts on smaller models, because if you put it on thick, it looks too much for these smaller models and they just end up looking dusty and a bit weird. I then cleaned it off the high points with some thinner on a cotton bud to get some bits looking crisp again and nice and detailed. And when I was done with this, the bases were dry and ready to move on to the next stage. The next stage is a bit of Agrax Earthshade, then up through Sylvaneth Bark Dry Brush and Terminator Stone Dry Brush Paints. Really easy, really fast, slap on that shade, give it a blast with a hairdryer to dry it off real quick, and then onto the dry brushing. One medium strength dry brush layer of Sylvaneth Bark, then onto a very light layer of Terminator Stone, because I still want this to read as brown. This is just to pick up little extra bits of detail so you can see what's on the base a bit better. I wanted to make this look real trenchy and wet, so I thought I'd use some of this AK Puddles. I used it before on bigger things, and I wanted to see if it worked on little bases. So this is a little experiment. Where I'd used it before, I hadn't realised some of it had dried in the nib. So I applied a little bit of pressure, absolutely f***ed it. Great. I wiped a lot of it off the side with the tissue, repaired the contrast paint on the base rim, and just decided that that one had a lot of liquid on. That was a big puddle on that one. Very wet trench. Just like your mum, way! I dabbed proportionate amounts on the rest of the bases and it looked quite good, but I was having a problem where it looked a bit like droplets of water. I fixed this with a spatula, just going around, spreading them a little bit, breaking the surface tension and letting them settle in the little dips in the texture paint on the base. AK say this stuff is self-leveling, which I have found to be true in other cases and it does work really well. Last week I asked guys to name this night and the winner of that is Dreamcatcher Ben with the name Thrasher. I'm going to be freehanding all of these names that we're picking out on the shoulder pads probably there. This week I've got something a little different for you to name. Name the Commissar that you heard speaking in Lizard Law. He is the Commissar of the 69th Legion of the Death Creeks of Court. Death Corp to Creek. Death Creek. And I will be making him next week. I would love to have a name ready to go. I'm going to be kit bashing them out of three, I think, different kits, three, maybe four different kits. And this Commissar will be going in the diorama that's in the diorama. So stay tuned for that fun. Without further ado, let's have a look at the final product and see how I did in my one day kill team. I am super happy with these guys. They're nice and drab and grungy and grimdarky and they look like they've been digging and are about to face the awful battle that will probably tear them apart. Thank you so much everyone who has watched this video and everyone who watched my last video. It's done wonders for the channel. And thank you to everyone who's been here from the very start as well, those day oneers. Tickle that little like button and join the growing hordes of subscribers. I'll let this play out with some cool music. Remember, it's not a pile of shame, it's a pile of future fun.